All right, let's get right into it. We are about to pull back the curtain on one of the most secretive and, let's be honest, powerful censorship machines on the entire planet. This is the story of a massive crack in the Great Firewall of China, and what came pouring out is unbelievable. You know, it's a question that sounds like it's ripped straight from a spy thriller script. But in September 2023, it actually happened. And this leak? It didn't just expose a few secrets. It laid bare the entire business model of digital authoritarianism. And when I say this leak was massive, I really mean it. We're talking about over 500 gigabytes of data. That's not just a few memos or a couple of emails. No, this is the whole shebang. Source code, internal work logs, even private chats from a key developer of China's Great Firewall. So where did it all come from? A company called Gedge Networks and its academic partner, the Mesa Lab. Now, these aren't just any old tech companies. Together, they are one of the core technical forces building and maintaining the Great Firewall, providing censorship and surveillance tech not just inside China, but to governments all over the world. So who are the masterminds behind all this tech? I mean, to really understand the tools, you've got to understand the architects first. And this story, it doesn't start in some shadowy government building. It actually starts in a university research lab. So on one side, you've got the Mesa Lab. It's a research group at the state-run Chinese Academy of Sciences. Think of this as the brains of the operation, where all the foundational R&D happens. And on the other side, you've got Gige Networks, the commercial spinoff they created in 2018. They're the ones who take all that academic research and package it up into slick, sellable products. It is a direct pipeline from the lab to the global marketplace. And just in case you had any doubts about their credentials, the company's own documents proudly boast that their chief scientist is none other than Fang Binjing, the man widely known as the father of the Great Firewall. Yeah, this isn't some third-party contractor. This is the absolute inner circle. But what's really wild when you look at this timeline is just how fast this all happened. The Mesa Lab was only officially set up in 2012. Within just four years, its yearly revenue was already over $35 million. And only two years after that, boom, Gige Networks is born, with Mesa's top talent, like their CTO Zhang Chao, sliding right into the leadership roles. This was a lightning-fast, state-supported jump from research project to global business. Okay, so we know the architects, but what exactly did they build? Now we get to the core of the leak. Let's take a look inside the sensors toolbox. First up, meet the flagship product, the Tiangao Secure Gateway, or TSG for short. You can think of this thing as the workhorse of the whole system. It's a seriously powerful piece of hardware and software that gets installed right into a country's internet backbone. Its job is to perform deep packet inspection, which is basically a fancy way of saying it can open up and read every piece of data flying across the network. It's built to filter, to track, and to control everything. Of course, all that power is pretty useless if you don't have a control panel. And that's where Cyber Narrator comes in. This is the slick, easy-to-use dashboard that lets government clients, even people with zero technical skills, wield all the power of the TSG. With just a few clicks, they can search surveillance data, block websites, and even track the real-time location of specific mobile phone users. And the capabilities are just breathtaking. We're talking about a system that can modify the websites you visit as you're browsing them. It can inject malware into the files you download. It can track you not just by your IP address, but by your phone's unique hardware IDs, like the IMEI and IMSI. It's designed specifically to hunt down and block VPNs, to selectively slow down your internet connection, and get this, even launch massive denial of service attacks from inside the network. And if you want to know just how far this goes, check this out. This isn't just a defensive shield. It's an offensive weapon. One feature, called DLL Active Defense, is designed to hijack the computers of everyday, completely unsuspecting internet users and then use their machines to attack websites the state doesn't approve of. It's a system that sounds eerily similar to China's other infamous cyber weapon, the Great Cannon. And that brings us to what might be the single most alarming part of this whole leak. This incredibly sophisticated surveillance system it was never meant to just stay inside China's borders. It was built from the ground up for export. The leaked documents show Geech has already deployed its systems in at least five countries, Kazakhstan, Ethiopia, Pakistan, Myanmar, and one nation we only know by the code name A24. And they're not stopping there. Job ads show they're looking to expand into places like Malaysia, Bahrain, and India. 
This is basically the Belt and Road Initiative, but for surveillance technology. And they are aggressive. Take Pakistan, for example. When the Canadian tech firm Sandvine pulled out because of public pressure, Jeej moved right in. The leak shows they literally took over the hardware Sandvine was forced to leave behind and then installed their own, more advanced system right on top of it, creating a brand new supercharged national firewall for the government. So let's pull back for a second. What is the big picture here? What does all this really tell us about where the global internet is heading? Here's the crucial takeaway. For years, researchers have been warning that China was exporting its model of internet control. Well, this leak, this is the smoking gun. It is the first concrete, undeniable proof of how that massive state-level apparatus has been neatly packaged into a commercial product, complete with marketing brochures and a global sales team. I want you to just let that sink in for a moment. The tools to build a national surveillance state, to monitor every single citizen, to crush dissent, and to weaponize the internet itself are no longer just for superpowers. They are now off-the-shelf products, available to any government with a checkbook big enough to buy them. Which, of course, leaves us with one final and, frankly, chilling question. In a world where the blueprints for the Great Firewall can be bought and sold on the open market, what does the future of a free and open internet even look like? And who really is safe anymore? <laughs>